my name is Lisa Freeman, and I'm a self-appointed badass social worker. I own it. And I am from the city of Pittsburgh, and I live in the beautiful community of Manchester. And my discussion today will be creating authentic relationships. So starting with that, the topic is be authentic, be you. And I'm going to travel through some of my stories and hopefully bring it in and tie it in, but we're going to talk about being authentic. My name is Lisa Freeman. I have over 30 years, maybe 35, of social work experience. I have a master's, two master's degree, one in social work, one in public administration. I have worked in every type of high-risk, dangerous, marginalized, impoverished, wealthy, with uh, elitist, with problems, problems, problems. I've been a social worker with mental health where people have called me, where there's been a shooting, their gangbangers have shot somebody, and they'll call me to come in, can you talk to the family? Can you go talk to the neighbors? There's trauma and they need some release. I've worked with people who have not had. I've worked with uh, food banks, uh, helping people not be evicted, helping people stay in their homes, helping their children stay in their homes. I've testified at court hearings. I have done it all. I have been in the trenches for a long time, but that's a job. And I had outcomes. I had things that I had to do. That wasn't necessarily being authentic. That was my job. This is how I become authentic. In a garden, with playing in the dirt. Um, I'm a badass super, I was going to say superwoman. I am too. I keep putting those names to it. Superwoman, social worker. This is where I get my authenticity, by playing in the dirt. I love being in the mud. I really, really do. Being in the garden in the sunshine, that's where, that's where I do my real work. And you'd be surprised how many people I've encountered. So this, this, where it all started, I have a garden in, in Manchester. It started as a community school garden. And we, it, it, it's partnered with one of the poorest schools in the Pittsburgh Public School District. And it was intentionally meant to be an outdoor learning space where kids can grow and develop and nurture something, a plant, and then take care of it and then see the reward of a plant and the fruit that it's produced. And that was the premise. We had 14 raised beds, and they, the city came in and put them in overnight with trucks and dirt, and we were ready to go. And my house is a few doors, a, a few blocks away from that. And real, literally, when I'm in my mojo, I, I'm walking on the back of my shoes, my heels are exposed, I'm probably ashy, probably looking like this with no makeup on, mismatched clothes. I'm looking like, God only knows what, mud itself, walking mud. So it started in my community. The garden is right outside the basketball field where people congregate. And I had a garbage can with the wheels on it. And I'm trying to get the mulch or whatever from my house. And I'm rolling it back, back and forth. And I'd been there for a while, and it was hot and sweaty, and I'm walking back through the little center, and these gentlemen, men and women, were standing there, young adults, and I knew, like, today, they're waiting for me, because I, I throw my hand, I talk to everybody, I like say, hey, but I was tired that day, and I'm like, they're gonna, they're gonna get me, when I'm like, so I got right up to them, and I just looked at them, like, you know, which one of y'all gonna help me? Because I'm old enough to be your mother. And they were smoking weed and all, I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> no judging. I, I'm old enough to be your grandmama or your mother. Which one, which one of y'all gonna help me? And they're looking at me because they're ready to laugh as soon as I walk by. And they said, yes ma'am, yes ma'am, I'm gonna help you. And he started, he took the garbage can and he started rolling to my house and the other, his friends that were there, they started laughing and I turned back and I said, don't laugh at them because I got a few more trips. You all determine who's gonna help me next. By the time we got back to the garden, he, got, he gladly helped me, got back to the garden, his friends were gone. He helped me not once, not twice, not three times. 
He didn't ask me if I had a master's degree. Can you help me? He didn't ask me about my background. I don't know his name, and he doesn't know mine. But when he sees me today, I know he has a baby. How your baby doing? When he sees me, I'm like, how you doing? That relationship was authentic, playing in the dirt. When, they see, when that was five years ago, when they saw me, like the lady with the crazy hair, they know me like that. The Jamaican, they call me all kinds of things. She's that from Africa. When, the, the, when they saw me over there, like, don't be, don't be smoking that weed, because she's over there in that garden. You know, turn that music down, they'd be boom, boom, boom. She's over in that garden, don't do all that. And they'd see me, and I'm like, okay, I'm sweating again, I'm moving around. i like, hey, you, come over here. And they're like, who, me? I'm like, yeah, come over here. Because they'd sit on that table, and they look at me, I was like, yeah, you, come over here. And he said, yes, ma'am. When they talk, start talking, yes, ma'am, that's when you know you got them, right? He didn't know me, I didn't know him. He said, yes, ma'am. I said, come here and hold this hose. You ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Start warning the curtain. Held the hose. And after a while, I realized I didn't hear no boom da boom da boom I didn't smell no smoking. I didn't see no activity going. And they started to be pulled into the garden. They owned that space. Like, you know, look how it was pristine. It was beautiful. Nothing went out of place. You know, that was their space. This was my space. We respected each other. There was no, like, judging, what y'all doing, you need to stop. None of that. So being authentic, I still don't know their names, and they don't know mine, but they know how to find me or, or help me. Like, that's, you know, the woman with, that's how they probably, the Jamaican one. Or they know my husband, Wallace, that's Wallace Sapp's woman. That's Wallace Sapp's girl. So as we went on, the kids, we did all kinds of things with the schools. We uh, took the, worked with the public school. Everybody in that school was poor, got 100% free lunch. And they worked on it for a few years. The mayor came back, because initially our funding was $1,000, I think, to start it. The mayor, we asked him to come and take some pictures and acknowledge and thank him for his work. And it was former mayor Luke Ravenstall. He came to the school that day, and the kids had never, no one had visited that school. And he was a petite, kind of white guy. I think he's Irish, I'm not sure. Real pale. And a sea of black kids came out, and they were in the garden. And we have a high population of children with special needs. They surrounded him, all these black faces of kids, all the white teachers engaged, wheelchairs in front, and he was standing in the middle. Those kids were so grateful, they made that mayor feel like a rock star. And he was like, yes, this is, what, this is how it should be. And our garden received his acclamations, and he, we were the model garden for all school schoolyard gardens. He used our garden as the model. And we were just so happy. And we built up that garden for years. And we had programming going on. We reached out to the community. We brought in the Y, and we had children's cooking table. They would learn in the garden how to cook and eat nutritiously. And then the garden was pristine. It looked like a garden of Eden. When you're trying to do something authentic, we didn't put out any words. There was no advertising, no nothing. Nobody knew my name. I didn't know their name. Uh, but people, excuse me, people started to tell our story. When you're being authentic, sometimes it costs you. One day, after five years of hard work, our sweat equity, my husband going out there at 5 o'clock in the morning to cut the grass or what have you, weeding, tending, in open sun, 14 raised beds, programming we got, we did not, we do not get funding even to this day. We do it as a service back to the community. I got a phone call, and I'm relatively new, they say. I've been in my community for 10 years. I got a phone call, or actually my neighbor got the phone call and said, Miss Lisa, Miss Lisa, somebody's down there in the garden with a laundry basket and she got all the tomatoes. So-and-so called me and told her, call Miss Lisa. When you're trying to be authentic, there's some people that don't understand. It's not about a green tomato, it's not about a red tomato, it's how about we help each other. So I got kind of upset, I'm like, all this that we invested, people just don't understand 
it's freely, there's no fence. So I kind of got mad, and this is part of being authentic, it happens. We moved from that garden, and I quit. Sometimes you get tired and I just quit. I had enough. Five years of my time, my labor, my sweat equity, my husband cutting this, doing free programs, everything was free. Making these relationships, I just said, that's it, I quit. Everybody coveted this garden anyway because it was always beautiful. And I was, someone will take it over. Before I could really quit, another position, another location came available and it had a fence and I put a lock on it. And we, someone said, heard, heard about me. Because when, you, when you're authentic, people tell your story. When you're doing it from the heart, other people broadcast. We, we never advertise. We always thank the ones who helped us. In our new garden, we have 41 raised beds, and they're octagon-shaped. So many corners, and then there's so many heights, so many feet up, one feet, two feet, three feet. So it has like an artistic element to it. And I worked, at that time, I worked 40 hour week jobs. Most people thought this was my hobby. But again, we planted a full farmer's market and it was free. We provided uh, community healthy eating people. We partnered with someone free. They came out and cooked healthy meals and taught us how to cook and then gave the families who participated the full meal and recipe to go home and cook for their children. We had, some of these gentlemen are my neighbors and they had their little band that they came together. We have community events, we have celebrations. We had a Jamaican, we had a Rasta band. We had a light night out, we had the police. We, had, we partner, that's how we work and, and we partner. And one story that I just want to make sure I don't forget. Being authentic sometimes will, co will cost you. And when you call yourself authentic, uh, I'm getting a little ahead. I'll wait a little bit. This is my friend Kenneth. And Kenneth has some challenges, and Kenneth just loved coming to the garden. When I open those doors to the gate, people just come in. Kenneth came in. Kenneth just wanted to plant basil. I'm like, okay, Kenneth, plant your basil. Because Miss Lisa, I love pesto, and we got to have some pesto. I want my own pesto. Kenneth came in and planted his pesto, and he brought another friend. And then that friend brought another friend. And it was time to harvest pesto. Kenneth made the pesto, and their friend came and wrote an article. They became a support group and published several articles about the health and the benefits of this garden. That article brought more attention. And again, we don't broadcast. We're being truly authentic. Whoever so, whoever so will comes in. Where we're located at is the bus stop and women, pregnant, addicted women, have to go and get methadone treatment. And that bus stop is right outside our fence. When the fence is open, they just naturally come in. I'm not doing any therapeutic counseling. I'm not doing, oh, my MSW, my, oh, let me talk about how political, or let me tell you how, to, we're just talking. I see you, you see me, I don't know their names, they don't know mine, they know me by the hair. And the one, this is a true story, the one lady like, um, I didn't ask her where, but I know there's pregnant women there. She said, I just want to come in, I want to come in. I just, I just need to be by the dirt. I'm like, oh, this is so beautiful, and it's so calming, and there's just me and her. And this, oh, the, the plants are so luscious, just me and her. And then she begins to eat the dirt. Oh, I just love dirt. There are some, some things where when you're pregnant, you eat kind of strange things. But she started eating the dirt. And I'm looking at her like, oh, God, please don't eat that dirt. But I just need that dirt. Oh, she's got mud all over her face. I'm like, please don't eat that dirt. But I just need this dirt. I'm like, oh, God, I'm, I'm over my head with this one. I'm like, please don't eat that dirt because more than likely there's cow manure in there. And we start talking about real issues. And you know, like, okay, like you need your children. People on methadone, and their support systems are broken. They don't have families to support them. That's why methadone treatment goes on. It's not meant to cure, it just sustains. People to people, my authenticity, I see you. People on the margins are badass kids. I lovingly call them that with the ankle bracelets. 
they're there. We sit there, we talk. My husband and I were Ward and Lisa. We had the grown men from the Penn State Correctional, uh, Penn State, the State Correctional Office, grown men. I was Ward and Lisa on the weekend. I had to keep them in line. I was there like, okay, I'm getting off track. Back to my family. When you start doing things authentic, people recognize you. We talked about the weed smoking. Mr. Willie Nelson himself, and I didn't even know that, Mr. Marijuana Man himself, called me and said, oh, I want you to present with me in Farm Aid 2017. I'm like, me? How do you even know me? Someone had given me, given him my contact. Who am I? I'm just playing in the dirt. So that marijuana, people smoking weed, I went to the top of the line, and he baptized me as an urban farmer. And now I am somebody, and here I actually am. Somebody put it out there. I didn't put it out there. Now, when you're a badass and when you're authentic, you start to move into a place where it's not what your job is. It's not to be seen. Nobody knows you, but it's a spiritual thing and some things that you're doing inside of yourself. And everybody here has some gifts, some talents. And most people don't even know what those gifts and talents are, only you. And you only do it, that you know, you do it. Um, but think about that, and this is where you get bold and you come up with big dreams. This was a dream, a building. I bought this building because I wanted it for some children who were autistic. So they could be in a place that had four walls and it could be you know, safe for them to be out to play. But the building had did a slow rot for 10 years and we couldn't save it. This building I posted because it's 10,000 square feet and it was the biggest piece of blight where I lived. I had, my intentional thought was, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of refigure it because um, you know, I like to save things. And then I just couldn't save it. And then I, I don't know what to do. This is a fire trap. If it went up, I'm going to be responsible. Somebody can get hurt. This picture, just through relationships, I made one call. Never met the person. And I have to call their names out today. Mystic Construction, Job Corps of Allegheny County, came and said, Miss Lisa, I'll help you. I'd never met the people, or Job Corps in passing, like, oh yeah, we could do that. We bring our kids out there, we'll do that. And we had to cut through a lot of bureaucracy because things wasn't working. This young man, he said, oh, I don't know how we're gonna get to this. We're almost at the end, but we got this one hang up. This one person, a black man, probably younger than me, we met in an office and he said, he put his contracting license his bread and butter, his livelihood, his children's future on stake, on the line for me. I had not ever met him in my life. I'll, I'll do this for you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Again, when you hear that, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. If anything would have went wrong, that man would have been out of business. His whole life would have been over. But he said, yes, ma'am. I, I hear your mission. I know what you're talking about. Yes, ma'am, I'll do that for you. So today, Thank you to them, people who are authentic. My last slide, building authentic relationships. If you're looking at the word authentic, look at it, because I'm learning now. I'm grandma here, and thank God I made it through this slide, but I'm over time. Look at the word authentic, A-U-T-H-E-N-T-I. Authentic, you have to look at the I, because in order to be authentic, you yourself, it has to start with you. Your gifts and your talents, they start with you. Those things that you're doing in, in secret, those things that bring you joy, that's what you should be doing. Not to make money, but to be authentic and to, to do something wonderful and courageous. And when you start doing your authentic thing, things just happen. People recognize you. You don't have to promote it. Where that, uh, that I is not authentic and where it's located, don't wait until you get to my age in life. Do this early. Be bad. Be bold, have big thoughts, have big dreams. Do it, conquer it, because you, our younger generation, is what is going to change our future. My name is Lisa Freeman, and I proudly am a badass social worker. <laughs>